Josh, can, can you turn that down? It's not uh, loud. Yeah, yeah, hey, you got it. What, what are you doing? I heard that uh, that you pumped the cryo vein up, so I'm just trying to trying to get a pump in, and you know, really prep for this cryo vein fight. Okay. Lost time, baby. Uh, yeah. Um, are you gonna be out of breath to do the video? No, no, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Hey, I'm, I'm Josh from J and JC. Well, I'm Josh from JNJ's Hills Up, and uh, we're doing Dragon Race Fire Peak, and we're going to talk about things we learned along the way. <sighs> yeah, okay, I'll do this part. So, um, I ran Dragon Race Fire Peak, and uh, I beefed up Cryovane to make the fight a little more memorable and give my players a very classic dragon fight experience. So, while Josh is getting his pump on, um, maybe we'll do the uh, intro. So welcome for real to the final video in this Dragon of Ice Fire Peak series. Um, excited to be here, and I'm excited to talk about this Cryovane fight, and more specifically, some of the changes that uh, Jake had made to make this fight more epic. Right off the bat, Cryovane, Young White Dragon, that's a CR6. Typically, they don't have a lot of the things that make dragons awesome in D&D. If we're just being honest, like they don't usually have all these cool like lair actions and, and things like that that make dragon battles just memorable and epic and i had never fought a dragon uh in the game before so jake correct me if i'm wrong you changed this dragon instead of a adult or a young dragon you made like a in between like a young adult right even before getting into like the, the stat changes and those kind of things what did you do to show that something was different? Uh, how did you, how did you make those changes and, and show them off? Well, I knew that you had never really had that true dragon experience. Michael, it was his first time ever playing and what's more classic than having a dragon boss. So pretty much what I did was because you had encountered him previously, I had him just look, so his scales look like they're dulling a little bit because dragons typically are brighter as soon as they hatch and then their scales kind of dull as they age so like something's just a little different he seems a little bigger like maybe the horns like i don't remember the specifics exactly how i described it but i wanted to try and showcase some kind of like growth spurt i mean what's more obnoxious than a teenager so let's put a teenage dragon here <laughs> this was kind of my <laughs> thought process <laughs> Uh, some of the things that you encounter with the uh, adult, you have some regional effects. So it was constantly snowing so that when you ended up defeating him, the snow stopped, but it wasn't like tremendous blizzard the entire time. Like I tried to have everything that you would see in that area or section of an adult white dragon and just toned it down a bit to just be like, it's just kind of starting to happen. Hmm. Then also the dragon's lair is one of the most iconic things. So I actually modified Ice Spire Hold a little bit to encase it in sort of almost like an igloo instead of just being on the roof. Okay, is that what happened? Because I was when we were just talking about this, I was looking at the map for Ice Fire Hold and I was like, that was on the roof. I thought I thought yeah. that we had something above <laughs> us. And that's just, so. <laughs> you know, I changed that because it was like part of a dragon is there's this magical thing about them in the area that they fall home. It starts to kind of form and just react their presence and just you know that's how i started it off there so that that's like the looks and the feel of the lair and everything but it also had some some lair actions that were a little different than maybe the adult dragon right am i am i correct there i actually just used the lair actions as a normal adult white dragon would have the save dcs weren't out of hand it was like dc 10 con checks and things like that so i was like eh, it's fine the look on michael's face when he was like wait wait a second I'm fighting more than just a dragon. Like the, the look on his face was priceless because a lot of new players are going to be playing this adventure and when things start happening outside of the enemy's turn, well, this is different. Like, like you can't, you can't do that. I is think he, Jake is, is taking cheating? liberties here. Is, is he cheating? <laughs> <laughs> nope. You're fighting a boss. <laughs> so speaking on like actions and, and, you know, just, just playing the, the dragon itself and using that fight. And then this is something that might not be specific to your version, but what are some tactics out there that a DM could use to make this a more interesting battle? 
Well, a white dragon is known for being the least intelligent, but the most like primal of all the chromatic dragons. So I figured any predator is going to know how to hunt. You know, Josh, you've mentioned a few times just throughout our videos, like the monsters know what they're doing. And this is a very, very clear example of that. But because the intelligence is a little low, I figured let's just keep the tactics simple, but still wise. All I wanted to do with Cryovane when he, he was fighting you guys was try to isolate one of you at a time and just handle the threats that way. It was very simple. You know, you go back to the layer actions and one of the options is freezing fog cloud. And you'd be surprised just how annoying that is for a spellcaster because it obscures line of sight. But the big reason why Cryovane is able to isolate is their fly speed is huge. You're talking about an 80 foot fly speed. Movement is a serious advantage that Cryovane is going to have. Now I did give you guys a nice little, little goodie that you could have for your fight and the potion of flying, uh, which I thought was just yeah. fun. The potion of flying was especially helpful because I, I don't think you mentioned this yet, but the ground was ice and slippery, difficult terrain. Yeah. Um, Poor Daisy. So, yeah, that's that. Like she kept failing her her checks and falling, and and it was just uh, unfortunate to say the least. Yeah. Um, but uh, I would say Cryovane succeeded in isolating most of that fight anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so getting into the actual stats and the nitty gritty, what are some specific changes that you made here? What what's different about this dragon than a young or an adult? So we're gonna put some of those changes on screen now. But overall, really, I just tried to split the difference between a young white dragon and an adult white dragon and just kind of favoring adult if ever there wasn't like a clear halfway point to choose from. So like I did 178 hit points, which is a little higher than the halfway point because I gave you a flame tongue glaive and you were pumping out damage. <laughs> so I figured at least if anything, maybe give a little, a little high on the health, it'll be fine. But yeah, you know, ability scores, saving throws, skills. You know, all these things, I kind of just went right in the middle. And one of the things I think was interesting is I tried to find a lesser version of legendary resistance. <laughs> you can put it down in quotes, resistance, <laughs> because you can't just succeed automatically, but I kind of just like, well, you can do a reroll to kind of showcase that some of that resistance is an innate magic is starting to, uh, you know, come forth for Cryovane. I think that's a nice in-between there where it's, it's not as strong and as game changing as a legendary resistance. No quotes. Um, yeah. But <laughs> I was like, oh, I failed. But, no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still significant. And, and it, it just gives the opportunity for this might work. This might not work. And uh, more opportunities for, for chance and rolling dice, I think, is a good thing. But what, what else? What else did you do here? Legendary actions is a topic that I thought was going to be interesting, too, because the way legendary actions work is they refresh every single turn instead of doing them in like its fullness. Instead of getting three legendary actions every turn, I just gave him five legendary actions total and kind of spent them like spell slots. And they still work the same way as in like they wouldn't happen on his turn. They would go after one of one of you guys went. But once they were used, they were gone. What I did do, though, was I just had in my mind that they would recharge on a short rest. So if you did happen to run for some reason and take a short rest to like Marcus is like, I went, got to get my battle maneuvers back or this and that, you know, that kind of thing. Well, Cryovane's resting, too. And then in terms of like the saving throws, like the wing attack is a save of DC 17 just because it matched the breath weapon that I chose. And then uh, the damage bonus is plus five because that's just consistent with everything else in the fight for him. So there is one more thing that is very famous with dragons, uh, something that they're known for, Frightful Presence. That, of course, is basically when you have to make a check when you see a dragon or you're afraid. <laughs> How'd you handle yeah. that? I felt like that might have been a little too far for this encounter. But one of the things that was important to Izzy, her character Daisy, had a background where actually her village was destroyed by a white dragon. So... She role-played throughout the adventure that she was scared of Cryovane, particularly scared. So I actually was only going to have her have to deal with that. But it wasn't going to be like, oh, I see the dragon. It was going to be like maybe if Marcus got really mauled or something like that to mm -hmm. really be like, oh, this is like a, I'm kind of the, the only frontliner now. 
know, the fight played out very differently <laughs> than I thought. But that was something I had, you know, in mind. You know, maybe Landor goes down, Marcus goes down, you know, might, might trigger that kind of a thing. I think that's an interesting way of just handling Frightful Presence in, in general, you, you know, mm. instead of it just being like, oh, I see this massive creature and now I'm scared. It's I saw this massive creature do something horrible and now I'm scared. <laughs> like, yeah, like it was, it was pretty scary, but now I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's just about everything for the, the dragon itself. But there was something else, and we kind of mentioned this in the last video. This is the dragon fight. This is the boss battle. It's the end of the adventure. It's what you've been working towards this entire time. And in this actual adventure, there's no real loot that you get for this fight. So that just didn't work for you, right? Uh, no, not even a little Thank bit. You. Really, my goal was to give you the true dragon experience and because <laughs> because of that i was like you gotta have some loot so i just went to page 137 of the dungeon master's guide and then i just rolled for the treasure as you normally would and whatever those rolls came up with is what i gave you because you worked hard for that and yeah. also because you were in between the young dragon and the adult dragon i you know had it encased in ice and i think lander was just like firebolting the thing <laughs> like to, try and, to try and melt the ice and get coins out and all that kind of stuff but i think you guys all had a drink around the campfire and like you started to notice the snow had stopped you're having the boss fight you can't not reward that <laughs> oh yeah just, it's just ridiculous it has to be something i thought that was a lot of fun and then i know the, the boots of the winterlands were in there i don't know if you rolled for that or if that was just because i kept saying you that know, was, it'd, be yes. really, it'd be really cool if marcus had those yeah yeah <laughs> no that daisy one i put in there them, and that that makes perfect sense why daisy <laughs> has them but <laughs> yeah i did put them in there specifically because you know you walk past that item and you're <laughs> your significant other's like isn't that really nice and you know valentine's day is like coming up soon you're like uh-huh yeah i got it <laughs> so when you decided to to make these changes and make this a more difficult fight was that just because you wanted to give us the the, the true dragon experience or was there a little bit of their these players are a little over leveled they have some oh, gear yeah. that wasn't necessarily in the campaign. They have mm -hmm. that potion. They have the flame tongue. They have all this cool stuff. Did that play into it? Was that anything? Absolutely, that played into it. I mean, at this point, you guys are believer level seven and a CR six, plus the fact that, like you said, you had the flame tongue, so your damage output was higher. The way Adabra was handled, and I had some potions that I rolled, and I rolled a potion of invulnerability and a potion of flying that you guys ended up buying, and. I was like, well, that's going to be pretty significant uh, in this fight. And I know that I was like, of course, they're saving it for this fight. You know, that's as they should. And so because of that, I felt like I have to buff Pravane. And it was a little bit of an art form. I actually simulated like seven or eight uh, fights just just quickly. Like, OK, there's attack with this and, that, and like three out of ten or something like that was was a TPK and I was like, this feels about right. <laughs> it's like, Who knows what's going to happen? Well, I'll say as as one of the players who actually fought this fight it was definitely it's definitely stressful um it was cool it was intense there were multiple times where i was thinking like i don't know if we're gonna be able to do this and then there were a couple moments where like i had put myself in a pretty bad position that like there was one time i think i got everyone breath weaponed because of where i went like little things like that it, it's just it just adds so much to the excitement and to the stress of the battle. And it was it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this fight. What are the most fun encounters that I've I've played um, in the game to date? He recharged his breath weapon in the fight. And I remember when that happened, I went, oh, no. OK, <laughs> like you said, you, you lured him right into. Oh, I can get all three of them in, in this second breath weapon. And I was like, oh, no, I think I, I, at that moment, I actually thought there would be a TPK. So running it for me actually this was probably the most fun encounter i've ever run just from dm stress i was like oh no <laughs> but you still no, spoiler alert you still did win the fight so we did it yes you did <laughs> <laughs> we're not finished yet so don't go but I do need to say, we would like to know about your cryovane encounter. So if you did this or if you're getting ready to do this, let us know in the comments how it went or what changes you might have made to cryovane. Did you use these changes? Do you want to use these changes? 
was your group crazy under leveled or did you only have a solo character like we, we want to hear about that we've really enjoyed hearing all of your stories along the way and, and we really do read every comment on every one of these videos it's really been a blast and, and this has been one of our most rewarding video series is uh, uh to date um just being able to hear how this has helped people and even if it didn't help you just the fun stories that that you had like the engagement on the, these videos has been incredible and and we really love it and we appreciate all of you for it the, some of the comments that really really get me in the feels of when i see something like i'm gonna be a dm for the first time so i bought the essentials kit and watching these videos has helped give me confidence to do that. That's what I'm just like, I'm like a pile of mush inside. So from the bottom of our hearts, you know, we appreciate each and every one of you. We do, of course, encourage you to watch the Dungeon Master Tips playlist that we have, any other video that we have on the series, and of course the playthrough that we did. If you haven't watched that, I highly encourage you to do that as well as everything we make because, you know, it's great. We're not biased about that at all. <laughs> <laughs> If you do want us to do something like this again for a different adventure, let us know because we don't know what to do. There's a lot of adventures out there and we don't really know which ones we should start with until somebody tells us. So let us know in the comments. That's where you do that. That is where you do that. <laughs> If you want to keep talking with us and, and stay in touch with us and talk about the game and this adventure, or any other adventure, join our Discord. The link's going to be below in the description. And, you know, we'll be happy to go into detail and, and talk about fun memories or adventures or, or just some tips that maybe we can't do a video on or haven't done a video on yet. So just join that, subscribe, and, and we got plenty more stuff coming. So we'll see you all on the next one.